Okay, once you're done installing a local, the local Git on your computer and you've given it your username and your email as was demonstrated in the Windows and Mac Git installation videos, we're ready to set up our project folder to be a local repository on our computer. Then we'll transfer our local repository to our public GitHub repository and then we'll be able to see our website live on the internet. So let's go back. Okay, in VS Code we're going to go to the menu option and choose command palette and we're going to type in git clone and if you don't see git clone you might have to restart Visual Studio again just so it recognizes that you have git on your machine and I'm going to click git clone and here's where we can go back and get our code for our repository and copy this URL that's what we'll be putting here and then we can hit clone from this URL and then it's going to want you to it's going to want to know where you want to put this clone of the repository I'm going to go ahead and go back into where I had my class files and I'm going to pick that folder of where it's going to go. Oh, sorry, just click here, <laughs> and and then just you just need to pick the folder that the the cloned folder is going to go into, and select that repository. And then again, you can say you can open this up and say go ahead, say open, and trust it to that. And it says, do you want to save your workspace configuration as a file? And I will say, sure, that's kind of a nice feature. So actually, let's not do that. Let's cancel that. We don't need to have a workspace right now. We'll leave it kind of simple for now. All right. But we should have it now keeping track of our um, that folder with Git. Okay, so I still have the About Me folder open. So I can just minimize that and maybe close all the files that have to do with that. And I'll make sure I've added that folder, if it didn't already come over, to my repository. And I can say trust it, if it needs me to trust it. And you'll see it did bring over that readme.md. It's synchronized up with our, it cloned it, or it brought over a copy of it into our local repository here. Now, I can go ahead and add our home page to this project. And again, I can do a quick shortcut with the exclamation tab or enter. And I can make sure it knows that this is my home page title. And maybe we'll give it an H1. So we have something in there. Knows I need to save it, so I'll do a Control S or Command S. And now notice what our source control icon is doing. It's got a little number showing that's keeping track of any changes going on in that project folder. Since it's our very first time, we're going to click this source control, and it says we've got an unstaged file here, and that doesn't really mean much to us because we haven't really learned much more about that. But what we need to do is say, okay, I'm at a point in my project, and I might have done lots of different code on lots of different files within this project, and I'm finally to a point where I want to kind of keep a version of them, kind of happy with where I'm at right now. And what you're going to do is you're going to give it some sort of a message of what changes you've been making. Since this is our very first one, we can kind of put init or initial commit or something like that, so we know it's our very first commit. And that just means keep my changes, commit to it. And then we're going to click this uh, check, check mark that's the commit icon. Um, oh, this one has not staged it. Sometimes it will stage it as well as commit at the same time. And so we do want to say always to this so that we don't have to hit the plus and the check mark every single time. So I'm going to say, would you like to stage all your changes and commit them directly? And I'll just go ahead and say always. And I'll just cut down on one step for us as beginner uh, Git users. And it went ahead and made that commit. And you'll notice the little number disappeared because it's all, you've got a version control, a version 
save. You committed one save on our local machine. So, but that repository now needs to go to GitHub where it can be in a more uh, remote server where we can see it live on the internet. So there's one more step to take here and that's to push it. You can either use this three dot menu here and click on push or you can use the icon down here. Um, it's kind of off the view here, but it's called a sync. It's like the sync icon. So either one of those will go ahead and push it to our remote repository. And you can see it's kind of working on up here. And it might give us a message here in a minute to see if it's, it's working. And you can see the little double arrow circling down. And what it's going to do is it will open up in my browser the login that it needs. Okay, so if yours gets hung up or it doesn't pop up with a login, you can go again to that terminal, view terminal, and just put git push. Don't change directories. Don't do this one. Just put git push, and you should be able to authorize with your credentials here. Okay, so if we go back to our GitHub repository tab, and you refresh this, the screen, you should see the index.html did make it there, and you can see your actual code in here. Um, I wouldn't use this as an editor. You never have to use that as an editor, but you do get a, you can look at your, your files here. I would always edit in visual code and then push your files up to it.